So today I'd like to talk about transmission fluid coolers. If you notice on the front here, I've put a transmission fluid cooler on the outside of the car on the front bumper. There's a reason for that on this particular model. But let's talk about how transmission fluid cooling works on a stock vehicle. So on a normal stock system, you have a transmission and then you have these pipes that come from the transmission that go out that send the transmission fluid out of the transmission and then it would go through a cooler and come back in. On a stock system, this is all handled by your radiator. So here's a stock radiator. You've got two spouts. We've got two outlets, one here and one up top. And that handles your cooling for the engine with antifreeze, coolant, or water. On the bottom, you have these two spouts here and one here. That's where those lines go to on a stock system. So your transmission fluid would go through the transmission, come out, go through here, go through a pipe and come out here for cooling. In the middle of your engine having to use the radiator to keep itself cool, it's also trying to keep the transmission fluid cool, but it doesn't do this very effectively because there's only a pipe in between here and here. So in this system, in this stock system, the transmission fluid runs a whole lot hotter than antifreeze ever could. So with this, we want to look at if you want your transmission to last a very long time and shift smoother longer, then you'll want to upgrade the system. So how do we make our transmission fluid cooler so that it makes your equipment last longer? If you don't want to scavenge parts or look too hard for a transmission fluid cooler, you can always buy them at a local parts store. Hayden, for instance, is a really good brand that sells coolers. I actually put one on my van and made my shift smoother because I wanted to make sure the transmission was cool and that it would shift as smoothly as possible and last as long as possible because the transmission I pulled for it was in very good shape. In this application, the Hayden coolers come with a fastener system that actually zips onto your factory radiator. So you can put it on the front of your radiator and then run your lines off of the rad wherever you need them. On the other hand, let's pretend you're doing an automatic transmission fluid change on your Honda and you want to boost its cooling ability, but for cheap. Locally, where I'm at, I can go to the junkyard and pick up a transmission fluid cooler like this one for 10 bucks, and it's overkill. Here I have my favorite model sitting on a chair. Hasn't been altered to fit to a Honda yet. This is off of a Chevy Suburban. They have them on the pickup trucks and stuff too. These are Canadian made. Uh, they're made by a company, I guess, called Long. It's stamped on the top. This is made in Canada. These things are awesome because they make transmission fluid coolers that look just like these, same surface area and everything. They sell online as performance parts built exactly the same but they gouge a couple hundred dollars for them i can go to a junkyard and find a chevy that had a canadian made cooler on it and they're these big ones all the other ones are these itty bitty little like this big type of thing these guys are real nice and hefty and this is overkill for a civic transmission so it'll keep that fluid nice and cool because not only do you have it coming in on these pipes, but you also have all of these cooling fins which have little twists in them. This keeps your fluid nice and cool for you. They come with brackets on them. You can unbolt the brackets and cut your lines down. I usually cut the lines and then just flare them by hand with like a screwdriver and then put the hose over. Usually use 3 8 hose for this application. And with this cooler and some 3 8 hose, they fit directly onto Hondas and work perfect. I'll make a video doing that because I want to put one on my mom's car, Spectre, and I also want to put one on my wagon. So this one in particular will probably go on my wagon, so I'll be making a video on that as well. Whether you like towing, or having an RV, or running a truck, or wanting to keep your equipment in top tier condition, or if you're driving a reliable economy car, or a race car, or you're beating a regular beater as a track car, this will be what you want because it'll keep that transmission nice and cool for you. It'll make your fluid last longer and your shifts will be smoother. Keep in mind you don't have to bolt one of these onto the front bumper of your car. 
neither do you have to zip it onto the front of your radiator. There are other places you can put these depending on your car. I put it here because I thought it looked cooler and it was easier to install that way. On that same situation, it was easier to install because it was a new unit with its fastener kit, so that's where I put it on that one. But let's go look at one that we've actually installed that's completely out of sight and you wouldn't know it was there. Okay, so this is Ember, it's a 92 to 95 Civic. Well, notice there's no cooler on the front of it. Well, what we actually did is we put it down here in front of the AC. So we've got the radiator on the left and the AC on the right. So what we did is we put in a dedicated racing radiator. These are pretty cheap. These are actually cheaper than the stock units that you would hook your transmission up to. So this one's like a two row. They're made, they're marketed and made for Integras. We put one of these in here to handle all of the engine cooling. For the transmission, we ran 3 8 hose off of the transmission fluid lines. And what we did is we ran them down here. I took the bumper wrap off and we put the transmission fluid cooler on the front of the frame in front of the air conditioning system. Which, how we did that was this bumper wrap has fins that actually jut out from it. So what I did is I heated up a knife and cut out some of that plastic so that it would fit perfectly behind the bumper while bolted in. But if you're looking to install one and make it look stock, that would be the way to go on a Civic because then you have plenty of airflow into your coolant for your engine and you'd have plenty of airflow into your transmission flood cooler, which will make your transmission last longer and they'll make everything run cooler. And this being totally overkill for this little car means that this transmission will hopefully live very long life. I know it had a rough one before we got it, so that transmission's been through the ringer, I'm sure. But right now, it shows no signs of having any problems, so we'll rock and roll with it until something happens. One thing to keep in mind if you're wanting to maximize your transmission life, some transmissions like this big guy have a filter that you can actually change out that are relatively inexpensive and easy to put in. These on the other hand, these Hondas have a lifetime filter on the inside of the transmission. So if you would like to put a filter in line, you can do so. They sell aftermarket filters that are in line that you can actually put on the transmission fluid line. So back, you know, in between where your cooler would be and your transmission, you'd basically take anywhere in one of these lines or both of them if you want to go overkill and you cut these lines and you'd put in an inline filter, just like a fuel filter, but it would be for a transmission fluid. It's got like a little magnet in it, kind of like how the drain plugs on the transmissions for Hondas are, that catch metallic material or friction material as it comes through the filter, which will keep it out of circulation. And that'll keep it from caking up and building up in the uh, filter in the original Honda lifetime filter, because once that gets clogged, you don't have any flow to your transmission at all. If you do buy one of these units from the junkyard, Keep in mind, whatever transmission had coolant flowing through one of these is kind of what you're getting inside of here. So make sure when you take one off, check the fluid that comes out of it if you're getting a used one, and you'll want to flush it. I flushed mine with just new transmission fluid. I just got some cheap stuff and then hung it up and just ran it from one end to the other. That worked good. That'll get whatever junk is left in there. If you didn't have that, I suppose you could use something else, but that's what I've used and it's worked good so far. The only downside to this I can think of is it will make the transmission fluid capacity go up slightly because, I mean, you're putting a actual cooler on. That's a lot more than what it had stock, so you will go up a little bit in fluids. But that's the only downside that I've found about this other than having real estate for where you need to put your cooler. I'm sure there's other models that have really good transmission fluid coolers you could get used from a junkyard, but I'm unaware of them right now. But this has just been my go-to because I know that cooler is way overkill for these tiny cars, so it'll do perfectly fine for me. So that's been my go-to. Okay, so that's my little tidbit for the day. Stay tuned for more videos.